Ladies and gentlemen, all of us know about the Central Park Five, but what some of you may not have realized, there was a six accuser and he was recently exonerated. His name was Steven Lopez. And back in 1989, um, shortly after they had the five arrests, there was a six person and he was that person that was accused as well. And so this was the sixth teenager charged in the 1989 Central Park jogger case. And he is finally exonerated. Mm, 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 after all these years. So a co-defendant of the so-called Central Park Five, whose conviction in the notorious 1989 rape of a jogger were thrown out more than a decade later, had his conviction, a uh, related charge, uh, overturned. Stephen Lopez was exonerated in response to requests by both Lopez's attorney and prosecutor uh, at the court hearing in Manhattan. Lopez at the time was 15 years old when he was arrested along with the five other Black and Latino teenagers in the rape case and assault of Trisha Milley. But reached a deal with prosecutors to plead guilty to a lesser charge that he and several others uh, mugged a male jogger on the same site. District Attorney Alvin Bragg told the judge Monday that a review of the case found that Lopez had pled guilty involuntarily in the face of false statements and under immense external pressure. He served more than three years behind bars before being released in early 1990s. Lopez is now a 48 year old man and he didn't give a statement in court and left without speaking to reporters. Lopez is looking for privacy at this time and his attorney, Eric Shapiro Renfro, you know, this is what they're saying. And I don't blame them, you know, after going through uh, something like that, because this is a big thing in America. America is big on accusing people that never committed the crime. And I really, to this very day, I really believe the majority of the prisoners in America are people that never committed the crime. And probably the ones that did commit the crimes, they're in small numbers. I really believe that. You know, once upon a time, I used to believe most of the people sitting in prison probably did commit a crime. I, after looking at these exonerations day in and day out, I no longer believe that. I think the big bulk of the prison population are poor people that can't afford an attorney and can't sufficiently fight a case when they are accused. That's who the majority are sitting in these prisons. I really believe that. This country has done many people wrong only because they're disadvantaged and you, you did them wrong over racism as well. So during the hearing, the defense attorney told his client, I believe what happened to you was a profound injustice and an American tragedy. I am happy to be here today with DA Bragg so we can give you your name back. The brutal assault on Melly, a 28-year-old white investment banker, who was in a coma for 12 days after the attack was considered, um, you know, so they just took what she said. You know how it is. Some people, because of who and what they are, their word carries weight, which it should never be that way. It should never be that way. Whenever somebody is accused of doing a crime, there should be a full professional investigation. But that doesn't happen here. That doesn't happen here. Mm -mm. 
So her assault happened on a night where several other people had been attacked in a park by groups of youths. Five teenagers were convicted in the attack and they served six to 13 years in prison. Their convictions were all thrown out in 2002 after evidence linked a convicted serial rapist and murderer, Mateus Reyes, to the attack. Reyes told investigators that he alone had been responsible for Millie's assault. Prosecutors who reviewed the case had concluded the teenagers confessed uh, their confessions made hours after interrogations were deeply flawed. A comparison of statements revealed troubling discrepancies they wrote in court papers at the time. The accounts given by the five defendants differed from one another on specific details of virtually every major aspect of the crime. Prosecutors said Monday that statements implicating Lopez and the violence that night were also unreliable. Other individuals who link Lopez to the attack on uh, male and female joggers later recanted their allegations in the civil disposition. Um, I'm sorry, deposition. And prosecutors wrote in court papers, a male jogger never identified Lopez as one of the assailants, the paper added. The Central Park Five, now sometimes known as the Exonerated Five, went on to win a $40 million settlement from the city and inspired books, movies, and television shows. Lopez has not received a settlement and his case has been uh, nearly forgotten in the years since he pled guilty to the robbery in 1991 to avoid more serious rape charges. He expected exoneration. Um, you know, his exoneration was originally reported in the New York Times. And the Associated Press does not usually identify victims of sexual assault, but Millie went public in 2003 and published a book titled, I Am the Central Park Jogger. So, you know, like many others, you know, I'm glad he got exonerated. You know, nobody should have to go through the hell of being imprisoned and accused of a crime. It just tears down your whole life. You can barely get a job. You can't really do too much of nothing without somebody looking at your background if you're trying to become gainfully employed. And people, you know, in America, they tend to keep persecuting you even after you get out of jail. That's exactly what they do. But Hopefully he'll get something out of this. He definitely deserved it. You spent all those years in jail for something you never did, you know? And how do you get past that psychologically? You really can't, you know? But see, these folks think this is a joke because they don't have to face these things, you know? We know that jail is an internal slavery you, you took the plantation and you put the plantation behind the bars. That's why this country has so many inmates in comparison to other nations. How do you keep the slave labor going if you don't falsify crimes on people? And that's really the bottom line. But y'all, please tell me what you think about this story. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.